Most water pumps utilized for irrigation purposes worldwide are powered by engines run on fossil fuels, diesel, petrol, gas, or an electricity supplied from the grid. The electricity supply in the global south is often insufficient, unreliable, or wholly absent in rural areas. Fossil energy sources for diesel generators are limited and their emissions have negative climate impacts. At the same time, prices for solar panels have decreased considerably, making solar pumps for irrigation an economical, technical and environmentally viable alternative. In 2019, the Ostfalia University of Applied Sciences, supported by GRZ and on behalf of BMZ, set up an e-learning course to provide basic knowledge on solar models, pumps and irrigation systems. The course Solar Powered Irrigation Systems SPS is designed to give background information to advisors, service providers and practitioners in the field of solar irrigation and to provide guidance to end users, policy makers and financiers. Beside the content, major part of the course are the screencasts, which demonstrate the use of the Excel tools developed by GRZ and FAO and collected in the so-called toolkit to support planning, configuration and dimensioning of an SPIS. The course offers also the hands-on videos, which give important hints and tips how to operate and maintain an irrigation system. The course consists of 17 lessons, video films, additional resources and practical exercises. Full participants to the course content requires approximately 25 to 30 hours. The course contains an interactive forum to support an exchange between participants and experts and to foster the networking. Learning activities are also supported by live classes over the internet, the so-called webinars. Please notice that the webinars are available during a guided training session only. If you join the open course, you can at least check the recordings of the webinars which were held in the past. This video gives a short overview to the interface, the tools and the course content. It intends to support you in deciding whether the course fits your needs. Before you can log into the course room, we kindly ask you to provide some basic data. Please proceed to the login frame and enter your username and password that you received. The login data are case sensitive, so please enter the data exactly as sent to you. After login, you come to the welcome page, the cafeteria, which provides news, dates and further notifications. You can reach every part of the course from the menu left. Most important is the classroom with the actual course content. The classroom consists of four sections. Each one is described on the overview page from where you can also enter an individual section. Choosing a section header gives an overview of the lessons which the particular section contains. From here you can enter each lesson. The lessons consist of several pages. Please go through the pages by either clicking the overview or by using the symbols. Each lesson finishes with some additional resources for the web, PDFs, documents, videos or similar. When considering an irrigation system, the first aspect is the availability of resources. In our case, the question how much water can be pumped without over-exploitation of the groundwater. Also, the national regulations and water rights have to be taken into account. The lesson Safeguard Water assembles the most important aspects. It should be clear that water extraction must be based on all the necessary information on water availability. This data must be collected before any further planning for an SPIS takes place. SPIS are complex systems and their design requires not only a photovoltaic pump system and irrigation infrastructure on the supply side, 
It also needs an assessment and a collection of data for the intended irrigation system. This collection compromises the site data, the crop and livestock data and how to evaluate the water supply situation in general. As soon as those data have been collected, the water requirement tool is used to determine the water demand requirement for solar powered irrigation. The lesson water requirement explains the collection of the data and the use of the water requirement tool. You may want to refer to a screencast in which this tool is explained. The actual configuration of an SPIS is described in the section Planning and Implementation. As said before, the first step is to collect the necessary data and the water demand. Beside the physical data, especially the question how to raise financial means is also quite important. Loan institutions require a solid business plan to be convinced to invest into an SPIS. The analysis uses the farm analysis tool, which is also explained in a screencast. The lessons a system choice and setup use and describe the paving tool and give tips how to prepare the site and how to check the installation. The section Solar Pumping Essentials describes basically how electricity is generated from solar radiation and how different pump types are working. The size of the pump depends on the water requirement and the pumping head. The lesson Water Pumps describes the use of the pump sizing tool. You can also refer to a screencast in which this tool is explained. Solar cells make use of what is known as the photovoltaic effect, which converts light directly into electricity. Depending on the radiation and the different water demands, various mounting options are feasible. The controller is a link between the solar generator and the motor pump and is essential for the system reliability. The inverter converts DC, direct current as produced by solar panels, into AC, alternating current. The controller regulates the number of revolutions of the motor and protects the pump. The lesson water pumps provides information about the most common types of water pumps. The course concentrates on centrifugal pumps, helical rotor pumps and piston pumps, how they function, their technical parameters and how they can be monitored. Here some basics on electricity and how pump motors are working is also explained. Most important is the pump sizing tool, which is available as Excel sheet. The use is described in a screencast, which you can find in further resources and also in audiovisual media. The hands-on videos deal with the three major types of pumps. Lesson 2.4 describes the use of reservoirs or tanks which can accumulate and store water pumped in over the day. They can provide a constant pressure level for the irrigation system to distribute the water to all corners of the field. Valves control the quantity of water flowing to the different sections of an irrigation system. The next page describes some common filter types used to remove particles. A filter is essential in any drip irrigation system. Fertigation means the injection of fertilizers into an irrigation system. The lesson does not go very much into deep concerning fertigation, it covers only the main aspects. However, an interview with an expert on fertigation is contained. The last page of this lesson deals with pressure regulation using special drip lines and membranes. The course does not deal in detail with do-it-yourself installations. Instead, we describe the installation of an SPIS on a farm price service provider 
and give some tips how to choose an installation service. The Workmanship Quality Checklist and the PVP Acceptance Test are described in Lesson 3.4. These tools support end users in evaluating the quality of an installation. Nevertheless, it is the end user's responsibility to check the quality of an installation and, above all, to continuously monitor an SPIS system after commissioning. The main sources of errors and lack of efficiency of a system are often the electrical wiring and dirty, damaged and shaded solar panels. Section 4 gives a brief overview on effective measures uh, to monitor the performance of an existing installation to guarantee proper installation of the SPIS and to avoid common mistakes during the installation. To ensure that the normal lifespan is reached, a responsible maintenance is needed and should be documented in writing in order not to lose any warranties. Irrigation is essential for food security and rural development. Lesson 1.2 looks mainly at environmental and socio-economic aspects. Lesson 2.5 provides guidance on key issues around planning and managing a solar-powered irrigation system for agriculture. Nevertheless, the course concentrates more on the water pumping technologies, on the water demand of crops and livestock, and on the aspects of sustainable exploitation rather than on the irrigation devices themselves. Two video clips describe the most common techniques of water-saving irrigation, such as drip irrigation and sprinkler irrigation. Before we come to an end of this video, we want to draw your attention to the two field visits to Miss Mary Machiko's farm in Kenya. You find these lessons in sections 2 and 3. They give you the opportunity to test your acquired knowledge as a real example from Kenya. The questions are based on the country case card Kenya. It gives you the opportunity to train the use of the Excel tools of the toolkit with practical data. Before you can work with the tools, please refer to the respective lessons and to the screencast where the use and the background of the tools are explained. If you are interested in the economical side of an SPIS from a financial institution's perspective, please look at the Excursus Economical Question at the end of Section 3. The Excursus focuses on the product features for SPIS loans, considering direct financing by an institution to a small or medium-scale agricultural end-user. Solar-powered irrigation can be an opportunity for financial institutions seeking to diversify their loan portfolio and expanding their range of products. With this video, we wanted to give you an overview on the most important aspects of the e-learning course, just to support you to decide whether it fits your need. Depending on your previous knowledge, you may perhaps need a different approach.